Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a special guest here with me today. Hi! Also, if you're not subscribed already, make sure to do so and also follow me on Instagram. It would mean the world to me. But today we are going to be talking about how my gay moms raised me as a child. Um, someone actually asked for this video or you mentioned it. So we're here today to share that. Starting off, where do you want to start, Sherry? Well, first, I just want to say that these are all Sherry's tips and tricks yeah. and basically bringing up Alex. So it may work for some people, may not. Um, she was an older mom. I was an older mom, so that probably had a lot to do with my perspective on things. So just know this is just a little fun video, just my <laughs> ideas and how we did it. So Don't right take or, it too serious. Right, right or wrong, this is what happened. <laughs> I think I turned out okay. Yeah, I think you turned out great. So okay. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's start off with bottle feeding. When we were at the orphanage, one of the things that they recommended to us that even though the girls were all a year old and probably could eat some solid foods and things, that we should put them back on the bottle if they were not taking a bottle at that point in time. They suggested that because it would help in the bonding process with the baby. So um, we did and they gave everybody a little bottle to take with them. So we started Alex on the bottle. Now, a lot of people when we came back to the United States were like, oh my God, that child's like a year old. <laughs> that child's like 13 months, she's 16 months, she's 18 months, she's still taking a bottle. Oh my God, what's wrong? Why don't they take her off the bottle? We did finally when she was two. So we always wanted it to be like a smooth transition. And Alex was aware enough and smart enough at that time that she really understood what we were doing and understand consequences and things like that too. So when we went to San Francisco for our very first Shaman Sisters reunion, when we came home, we said, oh my God, we've left your bottle in San Francisco. Now, I don't remember any of this, so. <laughs> but you had already been drinking out of a sippy cup anyway, so it wasn't like, bam, mm -hmm. no bottle. We'd been putting you on a sippy cup, and you liked your sippy cups. Yeah. So even though you would throw them sometimes at Valerie when it's she so was driving. Funny. But um, we would sing, you know, probably many of you do not know the song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, <laughs> but we would sing to Alex, we left your bottle in San Francisco, which we thought was really funny, but I don't think she thought it was that great. So it really was a pretty smooth transition though. She really never cried about it. She would be looking for it like at bedtime and stuff, but we'd give her her sippy cup and she'd have orange juice or something in her sippy cup and then she was fine. But I think that goes back to the being an older parent because I don't know any kids that have gone to college and they're still taking their bottle. Yeah. So we had that same attitude also with potty training. So because she wasn't potty trained until... I guess uh, I was really late for everything. Two and a much. half, two yeah. and a half, something like that. I don't, I don't remember know. exactly. But I know that my mom was always concerned because Alex was still wearing pull-ups and she was older than anybody else she knew that had been wearing pull-ups. So my mom did a really good job. She would try to get her to go to the bathroom all the time when she was watching her. And we kind of watched her too, but we were kind of lax about it. So we did sort of the same thing. We went on vacation. This must have been when you were three. Yeah. We went on vacation to Florida because we usually went around your birthday and we took a limited number of pull-ups with us. So <laughs> every time we would get off a ride, go to the bathroom, eat, go to the bathroom, get on a ride, go to the bathroom. So we did that all day long, just going to the bathroom and back, bathroom and back. So when we got ready to fly home, we had two pampers or two pull-ups and not pampers, two pull-ups. I remember this. Do you? Yeah. So we put one on her and said, listen, if you go to the bathroom in this, you are going to get your socks wet. So, don't, oh no, we only had, we didn't have any. No, That's I had, to, I had to get Ariel underwear. Right, start the, start the story over. Alex wanted Ariel underwear. Yes, <laughs> so I So we got the Ariel underwear, so we have to stop wearing pull-ups when you wear Ariel underwear. Mm -hmm. So she wore the Ariel underwear. We're like, we're gonna be on the plane. So if you have to go to the bathroom, let us know. Cause if you go to the bathroom and you don't have a pull-up on, then your socks are gonna get wet and it's gonna be really <laughs> uncomfortable and it's gonna be messy. So we got on the plane and sure enough, there it goes. Went to the bathroom. Of course, we had taken everything with us. So we had a whole change of clothes. So we were able to change her on the plane and said, this is it. This is the only other pair of aerial underwear you have. So you cannot go. And I think after that time, you only like 
once when mm -hmm. in the office. Yeah. And once when you were in preschool when you didn't want to come in from the snow yes. because you want to come in to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So only twice after that. Mm -hmm. So the reasoning with her <laughs> that if you go to the bathroom, your socks will get wet mm -hmm. seemed to work. It really did. You didn't like having I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. And I don't know how I remember that, but I remember having to change and you put me on the little, we were at the airport mm -hmm. and you put me on that little changing table and you're, you told me that. Yeah. So, so it worked. Yeah. And I think that again is part of the being an older parent because college students probably not many in pampers or pull-ups at this point in time so you know, as you get older you know like older older you might have to have adult size at some point in your lifetime but right then in college we figured that eventually it would work itself out and it did okay so Sherry's theory on children getting hurt Although we didn't really have to use this with Alex too much I didn't because cry she didn't lot. really cry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she didn't really have any tantrums. Now I cry at like everything. <laughs> I cry at everything now. Back when I was a child, I didn't cry at all. There's still some people today that have never seen me cry. Like my childhood friends are like, yeah. oh, I've never seen you cry. So and I think that part of that was because when you're in the, or kids learn to cry and it gets them attention. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the orphanage and you cry, it doesn't get you attention. Yeah. So you learn very early on that that crying doesn't really help get you any attention. So you didn't cry, you would fall down <laughs> and get hurt and not really cry. My theory was I would always say, no blood, no bones, no tears. So suck it up, kids. Yeah, suck it up. <laughs> that, that's that's it. Like you know, that. you're not really hurt. So you never really got hurt. You no. fell a couple times, you were learning to walk. Yeah. Because that's another thing. You really never crawled either. Oh, really? Yeah. You I just pulled that. yourself up and started to walk. Yeah. There was a lot of people concerned I was so behind. I know. That was true. And we were just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> no, because we knew we were doing everything we could. I mean, when you, yeah. you're you behind, like, almost like a whole year. Yeah. You know, your body was physically developing, but that was it because you were in the orphanage and laying in a bed probably most of the day or sitting on a pot that they would tie you into during the day. So one of the other things that we did with Alex is that we treated her almost like a little adult, you know, just like another little human being. Yeah. Um, she wasn't really treated like a baby very much. We always took her to restaurants. When we went to restaurants, we always took her. When we went to the movies, we took her. We, we took her to the theater. One of my favorite stories taking you to the theater was when we went to see Rent. Oh, yeah. And we... I've always been seeing <laughs> things that aren't really age appropriate, as some say, <laughs> because I don't know. It's just one of those things. I remember a lot of my friends would be like, I can't watch that because it's PG-13. And I'm just like, what? What? So, I went to see Rent when I was like five years old. I know. Old. And it's just like, I feel like people just put so much emphasis on like I don't know some dumb shit like as long as you're explaining to your child and educating them I would rather have you see it with me and I could explain yeah. things to you mm -hmm. than to see it with a bunch of friends you know and you think it's dirty or hiding yeah. or whatever. Oh I also remember when I was little people when you would see each other kiss or see people kiss people my peers would be like ew gross and I'm like that's just showing love and affection like it's not gross like I don't know that I remember that really bothered me. So I love the, the look on your face when we were at Rent. Mm -hmm that um, we had the music from Rent before we ever saw the play. And we would play, I it. Love that We'd play it in the car all the time, play the soundtrack, and Alex knew all the words to the songs. So when we went to the theater, I think that was the first thing you saw in the theater because when they started playing the songs, she like looked at us like, what? Where did that come from? Oh my gosh, it's the same thing we hear in the car. So she, but you really loved that. And we yeah. had a lot of, I mean, we expected you to, behave the way we treated you. Right. So we didn't We'd always go to like sit down you. dinners mm -hmm. and I was pretty young. Like the only time that I remember causing a scene or like fussy was because I had this huge rash on my leg. Mm -hmm. We went out to eat or something. I don't know. Oh, and there's this one time in the movies where I didn't want to watch the movie. So I just acted up to get Valerie to go out and play with me. Also, I was afraid of people my age. <laughs> I was deathly afraid. They're like, go play with the kids. And I'm like, no, I'm still like that. I'm like, well, I no, think I really since, don't want to. Since you went to Valerie's work yeah. and you were at home mm -hmm. and then you were at mom and dad's, yep. you really weren't around any little kids. Yeah. You weren't really out playing in the neighborhood because you're always at somebody's house with, you know, or yeah. you were at the office, you went to work every day. I did. <laughs> you went to work or you 
you went to stay with your grandma, right? Yeah. The only people that you knew were large sized people. Yeah. So when little people came around, you were always afraid of little people. Yeah. It was, <laughs> so. well also too, like back in the day, like I couldn't really, I don't know. I wanted to make like photocopies and staple things. Yeah. I didn't want to like play with a doll. Yeah. You were a good office worker. Yeah, I was. You were a very good I would always worker. photocopy my hand. That was super fun. <laughs> You had always wanted to do that, but not not play with. You're right. You never liked dolls. No. Nope. This is a side note. I had this really giant big playroom, <laughs> and this is in our old house. And every time I didn't really like toys. This is really weird. But I didn't really like toys. And every time we'd have like a guest or my friend would come over, I'd always give them something because I'm like, I don't need it. Like get it, get rid of it. You know, <laughs> kind of like how I am today with things. Like okay, purge that. And so every time like one of my friends would leave with something, Valerie and Sherry would both be like, stop giving away your stuff. <laughs> She'd always give away everything. So, so you never really, you know, acted like a child. We, you acted the way we treated you. I know I see a lot of parents will take kids to restaurants and the kids are misbehaving, but they're misbehaving because they want attention. Right. They're not being paying attention. So when we would go out to eat, we went out to eat as a family. And they talked to me, like they engaged with me like how you would an adult. And I right. guess whether I comprehended that or not, I was forced to like, like listen, I don't know. Well, we would always like those those placemats that would have like little games and stuff oh, on yeah, it. They would always We'd always do get that. you the crayons and instead yeah. of just giving it to you and saying, here, play that, mm -hmm. we would play with you. Yeah. So we do tic tac toe and color, oh, and, you know, that. color by number and all that oh, stuff. Oh, I learned how to draw a box. Valerie taught me how to draw a three D box. Really? Yeah, that was at Bone V. I still can't do that. Oh. <laughs> I tried to teach you, I think. I know. But th they would do that sort of stuff with me and they never brought toys. I mean, no. iPads and phones didn't even exist back then no. so I didn't have any toys let's just say that no, we didn't take like, any toys because going out to dinner is not going out to, to the playground it's yeah. not the same thing right and anytime we would go to a playground we would go and play at the playground and we would play right. with you we would go down the slide and we would swing yeah. you and we didn't just send you off to play with other kids because mm -hmm. you wouldn't have played with those kids anyway no I wouldn't but we'd go out um remember going to hideaway hills and yeah, we went. We went on hikes and you remember stuff. Going on hikes yeah, I love and... my walking stick. <laughs> yeah. I loved that. Yeah, but you know, we didn't like carry you around like a baby. No, nope. you would like walk around, and you know. Oh, that... I hated being in a stroller. Yes, you never wanted to be in this. You wanted to be out walking. Yep. Or having someone carry you. Of course. You did. I love at the parks. You always me. had to have yeah someone carry you. Usually, that someone would have been Valerie, but. She always wanted someone to carry her around, but not be in the stroller. Yeah. I think you don't like being that low. Yeah, I couldn't I mean, you see Because you see like the back of people's knees all the time. <laughs> it's been not a very good view from down there. Okay, so we're gonna move on to some subjects that I really disagree with my uh -huh. parents on. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's always things that you're gonna disagree with your parents on. And these are a couple. Before we get into that though, I wanna say I was never grounded. Grounding really didn't exist in my life. Mm -hmm. So talk about that, Sherry. <laughs> no, we, you, we never had to. Yeah. Um, the only couple instances of, we'll call it a little misbehaving. Yeah. Not a lot was when you were little, we were still in Columbus. And this is when I was little. It wasn't when I was yeah, a teenager. This is when you were like, you would have been like three, probably three yeah. or four. Uh huh. We had this nice pottery thing sitting on the coffee table and that was next to a big cement slab that was part of the hearth for our <laughs> fireplace. And Alex took the lid of that pottery thing and she was like kind of banging it on that cement piece. Valerie and tells the story really well. Yes, she does. And Valerie said, you were like acting like you were going to throw it. And I was like, don't you drop that. Don't you drop that. And you just like did, had some kind of like stare down with Valerie and Valerie kept going, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. <laughs> And you took, you slammed it down on, on that concrete. And of course, being the good parent that Valerie was, what does she do? She breaks out laughing. So that didn't really teach you anything about that. There was no retribution for breaking the lid to our little pottery thing. But um, the other time was, it, all these things are with Valerie too. Yep. You had a habit of hitting Valerie. Yeah, like I would just hit her just and because. And you would like slap her on the butt. Yep, yep. But it was, I don't know. It was like playful, I don't like know I don't know. Did that, but Valerie got really <laughs> irritated she really at did. her doing that. And she'd say, stop it, stop I it. I think I was six or seven. Well, we were in celebration. Yeah, we were that in that time. apartment. We were in the garage apartment. So yeah, when, our, been, when our house was getting built. The first year we moved here. Yep. So um, it would have been sometime between July and October 31st. So yep. that's how long we lived there. Yep. For some reason, Valerie just got totally fed up. And she said, if you hit me again, you're going to be punished. Yeah. 
So I hit her. She hit her yeah. immediately. So Valerie said, okay, come over here. So she put a little chair, <laughs> a little baby chair, like with this your like funny. table and chairs or something, put it in the corner and made her sit there. Yep. And Alex cried. Now you did cry that time. I did. But the only reason she cried. This was the only reason. It wasn't because she was being punished or she was um, <laughs> this is so funny. upset that she had hit Valerie. No. <laughs> she cried and said, please don't tell mom all. Don't tell mom all. She didn't want her grandma to know that she had been punished. <laughs> Because that was the only Did time Mama she was find ever out? punished. Probably. Because it was such a funny story. I'm sure we had to tell her that the only thing you were scared of was, please don't tell Mama. Okay, so let's move on to stuff that we disagree Oh, on. now we're going to the disagreement part. The disagreement okay. part. I typically agree with their parenting style and everything, but I don't know if this is because you're older or, no offense, you're gay. So I don't know. I might be a little being prejudiced here. <laughs> but get into it, Sherry. Okay, so there are certain things that we would not let Alex do that other people do with their kids. Mm -hmm. And you do it with your children, that's fine. And I don't think it has to do with being gay. Sorry. I think it has to do with, for me, it had to do with being a feminist and yeah. not wanting you to think that the way you look, the way your body looks, how you dress defines who you are. So we did not okay. want Alex to participate in things that were, un even though we treated her kind of like an adult a lot of the time, that was only for behavior purposes. It would not, was not for how she looked. No. So there were a couple things that we did not allow her to do. One was I had the to, worst style, just so you know. Okay. That's what you wanted. Fine. We would not let her paint her fingernails when she was little. That was hard. You're a little kid. You're not. It's like just fingernail older, polish. Trying, it's like just a older, color. You're not like older trying to like get a guy or something. I don't know. I never understood like little kids having their nails polished. Because it's fun. Oh. We did not allow her to wear a bikini bathing suit until she got older. There was no point in putting like a three-year-old in a bikini. For what purpose? Because it's cute. So she didn't wear a bikini. Oh, I don't know. When was your first bikini? I don't know. I, I was allowed to wear tankinis, but I thought they were the most ugliest things ever. So, when I was 12, I got a tankini. There was, I was a loser. There was no point in wearing a bikini and showing off your body. Disagree with that. Because you're a little child. Well, I know, but it's easier to go pee, you know? You got a little something smaller. <laughs> that than, is a good point. Come on. I didn't want to do your that, technique of just moving over the piece of fabric, okay? <laughs> okay. That That is a very good point. I didn't think about that. So, whatever. But, yeah, and the other thing was dyeing her hair. And as you can see, that worked out so, so well because I'm now, crazy as, with the as hair. As an adult, she will just dye that hair any way she bleach can. Bleach it, but be bleach blonde. I didn't want her to have damaged hair already as Where a child. I would argue with this is when you get to a certain point in your life, like I'm 20, no, I'm not 20, I'm 24. <laughs> oh. You're more than 20. <laughs> no, it's so sad. Like when you get to a certain age, I'm not saying that you can't dye your hair like lime green, but it's just, if you want like a corporate job and like you're in an environment, you can't do that. I think if you're young and you're like a kid and you have no responsibilities and everything, you should be able to put some dye in your hair because you only get to, I don't know, this is basically society. Because you're thinking there's just a short period there's of time. There's just a short period of time. I mean, when I have a kid, maybe, or whatever, like I will let them dye their hair, maybe not on the root because it really can damage your hair, but maybe like a dip dye or like ombre thing where it's not affecting up here, but having them have like a little like a pieces down here, maybe like purple or something. Because when they get to be like 18, I'm gonna be like, you need to not have color in your hair. Cause like, you need to get a job. Like who's gonna hire you? So when you were little, there was no such thing as ombre or dip or whatever it was you just said. The deal was when you were 13, 15, 15, yeah, you, 15, 15. you could do one, one strip, strip of blonde, blonde by your face. And you did. I did. And you had one strip of blonde and now you have lots of strips and of blonde. And then when I... But you can have this kind of, this kind of thing and yeah. still have a job and... Yeah, I know. It's just, but you couldn't have had pink and purple and green hair because of dance anyway. Well, I know that, but like, so. anyway, as you can see, when I, I when I became <laughs> we don't agree on this 20, part. 22, <laughs> whenever that, whenever that time was in my life, when I had the bleach blonde hair, I did that for me mm -hmm. and I lived for myself and I went bleach out. I'm glad you did. Yeah, me too. You're I'm glad I did too. Making your own decisions. Yeah. You did, I helped you do it yeah. at that point. So it's not it was that a, I didn't It was want a bucket list type hair. of thing. So it was I just age wanted. thing, not right. the blonde hair. It was age. Yep. Plus I really liked your black hair anyway. Yeah, but if I was like, let's say if I was like going to be a lawyer, like I could not have hair like that. 
in my what? opinion, like bleach blonde hair. Like I wouldn't. You could do have that. that hair. I guess so, but still, I don't know. I just okay. don't. I don't think I would take it serious. I also wanted to add in here too. I know this might not fit in with the video, but it always bothers me when people are just so happy to get rid of their kids. Like they were <laughs> never the type of people to say like. Oh. We're so excited to like have my kids gone. They never, even if you did feel that way, you didn't express it in front of me, which I appreciate because I don't want to feel like unwanted. I mean, coming from an adoptee, I could see how if, if parents of an adopted kid were like, yay, they're like away, then that like could contribute to like ab abandonment issues, you know, like, oh yeah. yay. If you're going to have kids, if you're going to adopt kids, if you're going to foster kids, you should want it and you should enjoy their company and you should raise them to be people that you enjoy being around. Right? Like that. Yeah, we had yeah, um, so. very few babysitters. Yeah. Only and the times that I did have a babysitter, <laughs> it was horrendous. So and I didn't like always... them because they were, oh my gosh, I hated nap time. I could, But now I kill to have nap time. But back then I wanted to be treated like an adult. Oh, another thing too, they never had a routine. Oh, that's true. Really they didn't. Didn't. There was no nap times. There was no like, oh, snack time, kid. It was like, you hungry? All right, get something. If you're, well, you were usually if just you're tired, to be on go our to schedule sleep. because yeah, you were going true. to work. Yep. Yep. So you just had to be on our schedule, and if you would get tired, you would sleep. Yeah. So you didn't have a specific nap time during the day, but when mm -hmm. you were at the real estate office, you would climb up on the chair. You'd go from your little desk and climb up on Valerie's chair. And while she was at the desk, you would lean on her back and fall yeah. asleep and take a nap. Mm -hmm. So when you were tired, your body will tell you you're tired. So you never had any specific bedtime unless it was our bedtime. And yeah. you go to bed, we had dinner. But I mean, we were have dinner most of the time at the same time. Yeah. But you know, if it was a little late, it wasn't like you were fussy or grouchy because you had not been fed. Right. So you were kind of kind of on our schedule. We didn't have a schedule for you. Yeah, so I just wanted to add that in there because there's some people that are really strict about like schedules or whatever. I never had one. I also forgot to mention that I would always ask why as a child, as still an adult, I always ask why and my parents always gave me an answer. It was never because I said so or anything like that and I'm really happy for that. They always answered my questions. That's our last topic. Okay, well one of the things we always wanted to make sure Alex had a lot of confidence instilled in her because recognizing that she was growing up in a world where, at least in our area where we were, at where that time. being Asian yeah. was very unusual and she would have two moms. So she had to build a lot of confidence yeah. in herself and be a really strong person. So um, we always wanted to get her involved in activities that she could, ex where she could excel. We started, and I still have confidence issues with dance and stuff. I know, but, but you know you were good, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, because I worked really hard to like get to that level and I right. still wasn't like, I was like a good dancer. I wouldn't say I was like bad. I wouldn't say I was like meant to be a dancer, but I was pretty good. Yeah, you were. Well, first we got you into the gymnastics. Oh, I was scared of the balance beam. I know, but you did a really great job. All right, thanks. She was really great. They kept promoting her and then when she got to the balance beam <laughs> thing, she just wanted to quit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like why? She wouldn't walk on the balance beam. Even though the balance beam she started on was like this far and off the floor. And this kid told me something too terrible about the cheese pit so I was scared okay <laughs> anyway but yeah I was I was in a lot of activities and stuff you were brownie and took guitar lessons and mostly did dance but yep. you kept your body in shape you learned how to organize things and do a good job at, at school and at your activities so hopefully you grew up with a lot of confidence. I think what actually really contributes to confident my confidence and stuff is like doing YouTube as well as dance just because I'm not afraid of like getting hate or like I mean rejection is really sad but like I'm I wouldn't say I'm used to it but I've had it in my life like dance auditions oh you weren't picked to be in that dance well like life moves on like just look right. at the you, bright you side you learned of a things. lot from dance. I always wanted to write a book. Yeah. Called everything you know need to know about life you, you learn at dance. Yeah, that's true. Because you do learn a lot about life. You learn yeah. about teamwork and you learned about you did learn about rejection and yep. disappointment. Mm -hmm. And you learned about victory. Yeah. The, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Yeah, yeah. And you learned you learned about um, prejudice. Yeah, kind of. And yeah, you learned yeah. about what I want to say, I can't think of the word politics. 
Yeah. That's the word. You learn about Big politics. Big politics sometimes game sometimes. You might have the best dance on the stage, but mm -hmm. you might not win. Because right. maybe you were new to that competition. Yep. And competitions are sometimes political. Yep. You know, if you're new, you know, they've got other studios. They give them a lot of money. They come every year. You know, maybe you had like a really good dance, but you know, the other people were good too. And you know, they know they're going to continue to support them. So maybe they don't want to abandon those other studios. So it was political sometimes, not always but sometimes it was political so you learn about when you think you have the best dance and you don't win I also think what makes me like really confident and stuff is just being so diverse like we add diversity <laughs> anywhere we go and it's just like we're good people so like if you don't like that or like us which luckily we've never really had we have not. issues so like thank goodness so maybe if we had different experiences we would not say these sorts of things but i mean overall like we haven't had a lot of hate and i think just already being so different from everyone else and not like stereotypical and stuff it helps just when you're breaking the ice with someone new yep. hey i'm adopted i have gay moms so Probably so. Take it or leave it. <laughs> so I think that is going to be it for this video. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And I think that's gonna wrap it up. I was definitely not raised as your traditional kid and I definitely don't plan on um, raising my kids traditionally really, except they're gonna be allowed to paint their fingernails and do everything that my parents- Not when they come to grandma's didn't house. Didn't let me. <laughs> my, my grandma, Sherry's mom, let me paint my nails. And she then, did. Yeah. This is going off on a little tangent, but if I choose to put my kids online, just in general or whatever, like I never had a normal, a normal life. I mean, I never was like, I don't know, raised traditionally, so. Right, you didn't have a traditional family. Yeah, so I mean, it's fine. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.